Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. I've spent most of the last several years teaching folks how to work wood using hand tools. Perhaps most noted is my instruction on in cutting dovetails. In the last 10 years, I've produced three different videos on the topic as well as written a book. In fact, if you've seen my video Mastering the Dovetail Saw, I introduced one of my children to help teach you how to hold a dovetail saw, very similar to cradling a baby's hand. Well, that was Mitch, and it was a few years ago. Mitch has grown up. He just stopped by to say hello. Say hi, Mitch. Say hi, Mitch. Stay tuned. We're going to introduce you to the features of the saw. We're going to show you what makes it different than other saws. And I think this may be just what you're looking for. I'm going to clear the bench off and we'll get started. I've taught thousands of folks how to cut dovetails. And undoubtedly, the single biggest problem has always been mastering the dovetail saw. By that I mean they've got to go in there and with precision start their cut. You've sawn the tail, you've marked the pin from the tail, and now that mark, which is a knife mark, you've got to go in and split in half with your dovetail saw to avoid all that pairing. What you want is to be able to assemble saw cut to saw cut without any test fitting. Is it possible? Yes. Is it difficult? It can be. Let me show you the problem, then I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you the solution. What I would have them do is pinch the wood with their index finger and thumb. That creates an anchor point. Now press the saw laterally against the fingertips. Most dovetail saws have fairly coarse teeth, and that's good because you want that speed of cut. But here's what you'd end up hearing. Well, if that's the way you're starting your cut, you're not going to get the precision you're looking for. So I would have them do this. Pinch the wood, press the saw, now pull up or take about 80% of the weight of the saw off of the wood so that you're just barely touching it. Well, for someone new, there's just too much information. That's one lot more thing they're trying to add to an already complex process. Here's my solution, and here's my dovetail saw. We made the blade an inch longer. We made the brass back considerably thicker so it would be that much heavier. But what we really did that made the biggest difference is the first two inches have little wee tiny 22 teeth per inch. The remainder of the saw has 15 teeth per inch. Those 22 teeth per inch offer very little if any sawing resistance. So when you approach the wood, pinch it with your index finger and thumb to create that anchor point. Press the saw laterally against them. Just let the weight of the saw do the work. Use that first two inches to start the curve, and all you really need is just a mark like that. Just the beginning of a curve. Then you move into the back teeth, and it cuts with as much speed as you could possibly want. Now, let me show you some of the other features. We secured the, the blade into the brass back, Additionally, by using these little copper pins, the uh, weight of the saw is about double a normal dovetail saw so that we would have all the downward pressure we need just in the saw alone. What we wanted for the handle was something that was going to be heavy enough to balance out that extra heavy brass back. So we went with a composite material for a couple of reasons. Number one, much easier to machine than a wood handle. It's durable. There's no finish to wear off. It's waterproof. Um, it's wider, it's about an inch thick, which really fits an adult male hand well. And you'll notice we have three little finger recesses so that when you pick up the saw, you can tell right away it's a three finger grip. Index finger sits down the side just like this. Very light grip. And again, pinch the wood with your index finger and thumb. Press your saw laterally against it. Use that first two inches to just mark the wood. It's all you want is just a slight score. And as soon as you've got that, you move into the back teeth and away you go. I know you're thinking that's pine, it's easy to cut. You're right, it is. But let's grab a piece of walnut and I'll show you that it's just as easy. Of course, there's the difference in the wood, but as far as using this saw, it's no problem. Pinch, press, mark, move into the back teeth, and away you go. Cut with all the speed you're looking for. Now, one final thing. Call it my green solution. I am so tired of buying things and throwing out 15 pounds of garbage. What we wanted to do was to present this in a box that people would actually keep. So we made it out of walnut and aspen. It's got a nice finger joint, shows off the joinery. The lid slides open. Move the toggles. Now we're going to offer the handle in two different materials. They're both composite. This is what we call bone resin. This is granite resin. Um, they're both uh, equally nice, whichever one you happen to prefer. If you're interested in the saw, and I think it's the solution, if you've had difficulty with the saws that you've been using, mastering that dovetail saw and getting that curve where you need it, try this one. 
You can order it direct off our website, robcosman.com. We'll be happy to send you one. Good luck with your dovetails.